We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, the best way to get us questions is to send them through website. They don't get lost that way. They get saved, and I get a notification and everything else. They're not going to vanish. But I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. And I do have to say, we've been hammering through our questions lately. We are getting a little low. Like, we're not going to run out anytime soon, but we would love some new questions, especially new topics. What's been happening a lot recently is we have people ask stuff that we've already answered before, which is cool. I don't expect everyone to go back through our backlog, but it hasn't been long enough to cover those topics again. So send your questions as long as they're not two-player games or kids' games. Because at that point, we got lots of those. Anything else, feel free to send your question. All right, well, today we've got a question from Roger Braslett, who writes to ask, what are your suggestions for sorting and storing our hundreds of minis? <laughs> our hundreds? You assume we all have hundreds of minis. And I think we kind of do. Many of us, at least, they're into the board gaming hobby. So thanks for the question, Roger. Uh, this is an older one. It took me a bit to get to this one. Um... This, I got to say, hits pretty close to home. Despite the fact I have not been into a full hobby miniature war game where you collect armies since I think it was Warhammer 6th edition. And trust me, I don't even know what they're on now. Um, that was uh, back when Deanna and I lived in an apartment downtown Windsor. Uh, and we were trying to, I was collecting orcs, she was collecting elves. And we were playing with Sean and Tom and Jay Murren, and we each had our own army. And I think we played like three games because they had just relaunched the game and they had these rules for this island you could inhabit and take over. And you started with only 500 point armies and we were like, now nah, we're all going to dive into this. Well, anyway, it was a long time ago. That's when I actually like collected miniatures regularly. But like I, I still haven't played for years and I'm still getting an ungodly number of miniatures. Now, there's things like the Reaper Bones Kickstarter, which they keep doing these every year. I only got in on the first year, but man, it was a crazy amount of miniatures. Like, if you were at all interested in miniatures whatsoever, you got in on this. Like, the price was so ridiculously low for the number of miniatures you got. And it's all using this new funky plastic that you don't have to prime and everything else. Like, there was a reason they were able to produce these miniatures cheaper than anything else. But, like, I got two of the vampire boxes, it was called. Like, I don't even know. I think that's like a thousand miniatures right there with the two vampire boxes i it just like it, it's just nuts I, and i just keep getting more minis from board games nowadays yeah so and anyone who's seen the shelves behind him knows that storage is an issue yeah. and that's not just the shelves behind him Dude, anyone who's yes. been in the house knows there there are shelves all throughout the house that have that same issue yeah i've got miniatures kind of everywhere because uh, Part of it is, it's not even just, like I said, I haven't bought a miniature game. Like, yes, I bought the, the, the Reaper thing, and I got one for Christmas. That's why I have two. But even that was still, like, five years ago. I don't even know when the first Reaper was. Whatever, that was still a while ago. One of the things, though, is nowadays, it seems like every board game comes with miniatures. Like, in the last ten years or so, all our board games, all our games uh, are coming with minis. It used to be cubes, and then there were meeples, and that was good enough, right? You were like, hey, there's my army. There are a bunch of red cubes, and here's my character. It's a meeple. Nowadays, it seems like the market wants to have miniatures. Well, with the reduction in prices of getting plastic minis to market, uh, the growth yeah. of the 3D printing revolution, which has enabled almost anyone to make their own minis, it's put a lot of pressure on manufacturers to provide something that someone at home can do themselves. Yeah. That's true. And I think another part of it is Kickstarter. It just seems like the upgrade your standees to miniatures, upgrade your cubes to miniatures was a big thing. And it worked. And then you look at the success of all the, the come on games that just made millions of dollars for games, mainly because of their miniatures. And I think just everyone started to jump on that bandwagon. Now, as for a ton of miniatures being in your games, replacing wooden cubes, the, this can be divisive. Uh, I, as for it being a good or a bad thing, I think it's up to you and your group to decide. I have mixed feelings myself. Like, I do love a good, well-made, detailed miniature, especially if it's a character or, like, a, a main bad guy or a, a boss or something like that, right? But other games, I don't mind the cubes. Like, I actually kind of like the abstract cubes. For example, any of the Academy Games board games, 
the the Revolution series and the 1812 invasion of Canada, you just have a bunch of cubes on the board, and it's got that abstract, you're a general looking at a board kind of feel to me, which doesn't bother me at all. I actually like the cubes on the map. Now, the later version, Vikings, they put out, switched all the miniatures, and everyone I see complaining about is having to stand them up, and they fall over all the time, whereas just sliding cubes around is nice and easy. But then again, I don't think I would have reviewed and rated Cthulhu Death May Die as well as I did if there were a bunch of standees in that game. Well, and especially not from a company called Cool Mini or not. True enough. Though it's odd, they do have games that don't have miniatures in them. We, I play like Cronia. I'm like, what? There's no minis in this game. It's from C C Come On Games, but no minis. I don't know. Like, like The one thing I got to say is definitely an improvement or, or an advantage of cubes, chits, meeples, cards, whatever you're using instead of miniatures is that they're easy to store. You just toss them in the box, like probably in a plastic bag or a plano or something, but you just put them with the game. You don't have to worry about your wooden cubes getting damaged. Maybe you're going to get upset that uh, the, the paint might come off on your cubes for Terraforming Mars or something, but like who's ever broken a meeple? Like I guess some of the newer, more fancy ones, but like the standard meeple, those things are like invulnerable. I don't think you you'd have to like take a saw to one to damage yeah, it. Yeah, unless you've got certain pet types that might like to get their teeth on one, I suppose. But other than that, yeah. like it, it's almost an invulnerable little piece. I'm sure I could run one over with my car and the paint would scratch. Now this isn't true of miniatures, right? Miniatures need to be protected. Most of them have all kinds of bits and fragile pieces sticking out and bits and bobs, and I. Uh, they, they can easily be broken though so i do have to admit the level of this problem does vary and because there are different types of miniatures because companies produce miniatures out of all kinds of different plastics and resins and well back in the day even metals um some are better designed to be handled carelessly for example the miniatures in battle lore or memoir 44 are made of this flexible plastic that will bend instead of break you can indeed just toss them back into the box. That's what I've done with my copies. But most of the miniatures, especially the ones from the hobby board games and from the war games, are going to need more protection than just tossing them in the box. Now, if you're lucky, the company thought ahead and the box will manage to organize all of the minis that came with mm -hmm. it. But usually that's with friction, which brings up the next group of people who have a problem. Yeah, because many... Uh, maybe, I don't know, I, some, maybe many. I don't know how many people actually do it. How, how many people paint their miniatures? I know a lot of people do. I'll just say a lot of people do. I don't know if the majority of board gamers paint their miniatures. It's, it's a minority, but enough people out there paint your miniatures. And when you do that, you are looking at a whole new level of protection being required to protect that miniature. You don't want your precious paint job ruined by your mini not being properly protected. Yeah, when you pop that mini into the plastic tray, that little bit of force you use is not what you want when you've just spent a night delicately shading that elven robe. Yeah, very true. Now, when you get into actual miniature war games, it's even worse because you don't have a box in most cases. Like, you, like, technically, they put out box sets for Warhammer, but no one keeps their miniatures in there, right? That's just the way to get it to you. And then even if the miniatures are sturdy and likely not to break, you got to find somewhere to put them. Now, this is the big problem I have nowadays. Uh, all the miniatures for Warhammer, uh, both 40K and Fantasy, I own my X-Wing miniatures, my Armada miniatures. Uh, I managed to buy an army for War Machine that I haven't even played yet. Uh, I made a couple cars that I could use for Gaslands. I don't have a box to put those in. They don't, there's no Gaslands box, right? Like, there's no nothing. They didn't come in anything. I used a Hot Wheels car. Yeah, and it's not like even if you kept the box for, like, a 40K army, that you could be using those because they were all full of flat sprues, not assembled minis in most cases. Yeah, exactly. So that leads us to talking about some ways to store and protect those miniatures. So the one I use the most, and I'm not saying this is the best, we're going to talk about advantages and disadvantages here for each of these, is put them on display. This is, this is what I do to store most of my tabletop gaming miniatures. Take them out of the box, assemble them if needed, maybe paint them, though it's been a long time since I've done that, and then put them on display somehow. I, in my game room, they have a nice wooden glass display case that's got a light at the top with a door on the front, and that's where I put my best painted miniatures. It also... Because it can seal shut. Well, it's not like hermetically shield, but you can you can shut the door to keep most of the dust out. And then the rest of my minis are just on bookshelves. They just take up a shelf. I got a shelf for painted fantasy miniatures. I got a shelf for painted sci-fi miniatures. And I got a ton of shelves right in this room right here with unpainted miniatures. And now while these are great, you have to worry and do some sort of mental math with some space and dust trade-offs to make. 
there's only so much space you can dedicate to such things in your house. And when you start enclosing things to keep the dust out, that usually takes up more space or limits where you can put things. Yeah, it definitely does. And this does. It takes up a lot of space. So I'll start off with advantages. Advantages, uh, for one, they're on display, right? So people can see them. Uh, you can show them off. You're like, hey, look at all my cool minis. Another one is they're there. They're easy to get to. You want an orc. I can reach up here and grab an orc. Well, actually, the goblins are in front. Look, here you go. Here you got a goblin. It's nice and easy to do. You can get to your minis nice and easy. Ah, uh, people can see them. You're like, hey, there they are. But not only pe other people. I mean, it's not all about necessarily about flexing. You can see your own minis too. And yeah. especially if you do your own painting, you can be proud of the work you've done. And there's no reason you shouldn't be. Now, some disadvantages. Uh, the biggest one, they get dirty and dusty. And not only the fact they get dirty and dusty, but dusting miniatures is terrible. Like, your, your best bet's an air spray can, which doesn't even always work. But, like, they get stuck in dusters. Like, oh, it's it's a pain. And then you could just move all the minis and dust it. It's bad. Uh, they take up a ton of space, like Sean said. And you need to have the shelves, put them out, and they take up room on those shelves. Uh, especially if you've got doors and cabinets and stuff like that. Um, they're not with the games. So if I go to play Imperial Assault, I've got to then go to my painting case, open up my painting case, and get all the miniatures. And then even worse is what if I want to go play at the store? I now have to somehow transport those miniatures somewhere from where they're displayed to where they're going to get played. Yeah, and, and then transportation. I mean, aside from the dust problem, which is a real problem and increases when they're, when they're painted, a painted miniature is even harder to clean than a non-painted mini. Uh, yes. But transporting when you've got them on display becomes a massive problem. All right, the next one. The, this is what I do for most of my board games. I, I will admit it, and even some of the Warhammer games behind me still have them in there. It's just keep the minis in the box they do this, that they came in, not for the game that they're they're for. I, I do this for almost everything. Um, many of the um, minis from board games in particular are usually a little stronger, right? They're not things I assembled. They don't have lots of offshoots and little bits that are going to break. So as long as they're not going to easily break and I haven't painted them, I'll often just toss them in the box. And the not painting them is kind of, kind of the real yeah. key here, as we were talking about earlier. You know, if you are going to take the time or you are able to take the time, I know Ryan in our chat room isn't able to, but if you, if you do are able to and do take the time to really put in the effort to make that piece look better, you don't want to have it dot tossed around in there because it will look lousy really fast and ruin yeah, all that hard work. work. Now, the advantage of having it in the box is the, the biggest one is everything's right there, right? I grab the box, all the minis are, everything's there to play. I don't have to go anywhere else to get them. And plus, uh, because everything's right there, if I want to go play at the store, I just grab the game box and I go to the store and then I can play at the store. I want to go to Sean's house and play Imperial Assault. If everything was in the box, boom, here we go. Everything's in the box, let's play. Disadvantage, obviously, chance of things getting broken. Uh, another one's running out of room. I couldn't put all of my Imperial Assault back in the Imperial Assault box because I have multiple expansion packs. And the expansion packs came in these plastic things that you can't put the miniatures back in. Like, once they're open, they're yeah. open. Uh, or And if you get um, the other one, too, is if you assemble the miniatures, they may be bigger. That often happens. Like Sean yeah. mentioned earlier, that if you get the, the packaging from, say, a Games Workshop box, it might be pretty thin to fit the sprues in. Once you got those minis assembled, they're not going to fit. And another problem is you may not be able to find the miniatures you want if you have a lot, if they're all just tossed in the box. So you might be able to, it might be hard to sort your minis. So if you have a ton of, I don't know, you, you put all your X-Wing ships in a big pile somewhere trying to find that one TIE fighter you need, it could be difficult. Or even worse, if you've got, you know, a 4,000 point Space Marine Army and you want to take a 500 point, you know, troop out to go do a little uh, skirmish battle. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> So here is what I more recommend, recommend more so if you are going to try to keep things in the box, is to, you're going to use the box that came in, but you are going to use a box insert. Now, this is the step up from just putting the miniatures in the box. Now, we've talked about box inserts quite a few times in the show, and I think people have learned by now that in general, we're fans of box inserts. Um, when you get to games with miniatures, there are a number of companies putting out inserts specifically designed to protect miniatures and painted miniatures. The one that really sticks out in my head that I was really impressed by how they did it was the broken token insert for uh, Rising Sun from Command Games. 
This features an individual box for every army, every player, that holds the miniatures by the bases. So there is no chance of the miniatures touching each other or touching any part of paint on the miniatures. And then there's a separate box for all the monsters and the commie figures and all the other odds and ends that you could get with the Kickstarter. Yeah. Uh, one of the problems I've seen a lot with a lot of box inserts, aside from the, uh, the, the grip problem and that which, if you want to paint them, is going to be an issue, uh, I remember putting away the minis in uh, uh, Legacy of Lopin. Uh, yep. And Big Trouble in Little Big China. Big Trouble yeah. in Little China. And the miniatures are similar, but yes. not identical. And they've all got their own spot, which means you need to have the little chart that tells you yes. where all the minis go. And it's just a cheesy little piece of paper and over the long term, you're probably going to lose and or damage it. Or if you've got it, someone else can't help put the minis away necessarily because if they can't mm -hmm. see the sheet, um, overly specific uh, you know, mini inserts can be a, almost yeah. as much of a pain as no mini insert in some ways. Yeah, to be honest, all the ones like I wasn't even thinking of those in this. I was thinking more of a custom box insert from a third party. Because like Rising Sun came with a with trays to hold everything, but they're super thin plastic. Every time I take them in and out of the box, I figure they're gonna break. And they definitely have that problem of they don't tell you where to put them. So with for my monsters, I actually took a trick I found online using ball stickers and putting ball stickers of different colors on the base of the miniatures, and then the same thing in the tray, so you know where to put them. The problem is the ball stickers started to fall off, so that didn't work so well, but in theory it was good. The other people have talked about painting in them, but I was more thinking of these custom ones that kind of hold the miniatures so they're floating, right. so they're not sliding in and out. Because like you mentioned earlier, one of the problems with a snug insert is you're going to have that rub factor, and that rub factor is terrible, and that's going to come up multiple times in this list, and you want to avoid that. Yeah. So for custom insert. I said, I'm, again, I'm thinking mainly the, the wooden ones. Um, I've seen foam ones as well. Something specifically designed for that game is they tend to be a great way to protect your minis, a great way to transport your minis, and it keeps the minis with the game still. The problem is the price. Like, some of these cost more than the games themselves, and I'm not joking. You can find box inserts that cost more than the games. Then you have to build them. And having now built a handful of these, this is kind of its own hobby that takes a certain amount of skill set and you're either going to love it or hate it. Uh, once you got everything in your nice insert, you're not going to show off your minis. You can't be like, hey, look at this cool thing. Uh, the box inserts can make the games heavier. I, that may or may not be a problem with you, but especially if you're going to be bringing it back and forth from the game store, that could stink. And they can be completely made useless, obsolete, as soon as they put out one new thing. So I'm like, yep, yeah, my awesome cool mini box holds all the minis. Oh, they released one new monster. Well, that doesn't fit in my box. What do I do? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I'd be interested to see how, uh, going back to Cthulhu Death May Die, um, it was a really heavily packed box, and we had the retail version, not the version with all mm. the other things that came from the Kickstarter box. Is there a whole other box? Like, is there was there a secondary box? Um, for, for the Kickstarter version with separate boxes. So the best way to see that is watch our unboxing video that he did of Mike Murphy's copy of Zombicide Invader. It was uh, like right. that. It okay. was all these little separate oh, boxes yeah, yeah, yeah. of different nice. add-ons. And it's the same thing with Rising Sun. I have my copy of Rising Sun downstairs. I think it's seven boxes. Oh. Now, the box insert is actually, they call it a crate, and it's all wood, and it fits everything. Right. And I don't remember if, like, some of those they make and they fit in the original box. Some they don't like. They also the one for Rising Sun is a standalone box that kind of looks like a treasure chest. Like they they, they do a good job, right. but I think it's like one hundred and seventy dollars. Like it's insane price. Yeah, but it's gonna protect everything for that game perfectly. So that yep. they can be good, they can be bad. And I am certain there is a Cthulhu Death May Die one. Oh, I'm sure, and there's probably one that holds the three foot tall. I don't know if there's one that holds the three foot tall. Cthulhu. I know that, that one's a little bigger than our list. That's not a mini anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's a ma that's a ma that's a big that's major. A, I, I don't know. Um, max mini or something. Yeah. All right. Next is a generic miniature case. I'm I'm saying generic just because I want to talk about something more specific later. This is your generic plastic hard shelled plastic case that snaps shut. Some of them even have like locks on them because these miniatures can be expensive and like st people stealing Warhammer armies is a thing, sadly enough. Um, so these tend to lock shut and inside you'll find foam trays with rectangular slots for putting your miniatures in. For those of you here live, you can see one right behind me. 
I own a number of these. Uh, the ones I own are from Reefer Miniatures, uh, mainly because I got some with the bones, and I really like them. They're really nice. They work pretty well. I like to use them for bringing D&D miniatures to game night at the local store. And I have one that all that's in it is all my X-Wing ships. Now, it's the ones I chose not to display. I said I like to display my miniatures. But for X-Wing, what I do is I put out one of each ship in my game room, around the room, so you can see them. But I have multiples of the ships, so I don't want... I just put one out for people to see it. Um, so there are hard cases. Uh, thank you very much for the raid. And uh, a, a lot of people, when we think hard cases, Plano, I think, is probably the first thing a lot of people think of uh, for that sort of thing. Uh, whereas, you know, you get your you get your get one of your standard Plano boxes, and you can That's bring your own foam. I got Plano as a totally separate car- category. Oh, okay. Here I'm talking about specific for miniatures that come with foam that's inside, and it's layered foam that has slots to put miniatures in. All right. So that's what I mean by this one. This okay. is actually a miniature carrying case. Oh, okay. We'll get to Plano. That's on the <laughs> list. <laughs> so what these are good for is these are great for protecting your average miniature. Uh, they can fit a large number of miniatures in one case. Extremely portable. Really easy. They have handles. And they're great for transporting your miniatures if you don't play at home. The problem with them, though, is they're made for standard character size miniatures. So if you have larger miniatures, they generally won't fit. Um, the other thing is with the foam. Foam works pretty good. But if you have, like, spears or bits that are sticking out, they can get damaged because the miniatures do shift. There's nothing holding them in place. They just sit in a little protective little cube. Um, and I have had, because the miniatures bounce around as you're carrying it, paint rub off due to, to rubbing on it. And the same problem you're going to have with any case like this is they're not on display, so you can't show off your work. Yeah, and you really have to watch out for things like uh, you know, rapier uh, warriors and stuff. Yeah. Those the, 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 the really slender, uh, pointy, long things that stick out are uh, the... Your uh, spears, yeah, yeah, spears. Uh, the 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 strange Banner. implement on your on on your one Gloomhaven character jutting out from yes. <laughs> the, the sword. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll call it a sword. Um, <laughs> but you know those things jutting out. What they can do is they can actually uh, bring, because it's not closed cell foam; it's open cell foam. They can actually poke into that foam, get caught, and twist, rattle around, and snap or warp. All right, up next is basically the same thing, but a step up, and that's a custom miniature case because most games are now popular enough that the gaming industry has gotten to a point where there are companies out there that will make cases, and if not cases, then just the foam inserts that you can put into a case you already own designed for specific miniatures and specific games. Now, I know these have been around for a while. What I saw them explode onto market was when X-Wing got popular because X-Wing came with pre-painted ships. That was one of the first games where people didn't just want to toss everything back in the box, even if they hadn't painted their miniatures. So what people started putting out were ships, where, or sorry, cases, where you literally had a foam cutout that was the exact size of the Millennium Falcon and only the Millennium Falcon would fit in there. And you'd have a spot for so many X-Wings and a spot for so many Y-Wings and a spot for what else came in the original series. There was one other ship that came in the Wave 1. And then there was an Empire 1 with all the Wave 1 ships, right? And a spot to store all of those. Now, since then, these have exploded. Like, there's X-Wing ones, there are Warhammer ones. Warhammer 40K in particular has switched from what I used to play to be a miniature skirmish-based game into something with tanks and jets. There's a company called Battle Foam that makes an insert for every tank that's ever been produced for Warhammer. So if you have a Lehman Rust tank or you've got a Land Raider, you can get a foam insert specifically to hold a Lehman Rust tank or a Land Raider. It's extremely impressive. I know War Machine is another game, the Privateer Press game. There are companies, I don't know if it's Battle Foam, but there are companies who put out specific foam inserts for specific miniatures just for that game. Yeah, Battle Foam, Battle Foam is pretty uh, in- insane with uh, the collection of what they have. And yes. it's it's all very, you know, custom cut they have they have generic trays but they also have the the very specific specific. custom cut by game so you literally just go to there and and shop by game so the advantages of course are all the advantages we already mentioned for a hard case in the first place and well holds the miniatures snugly so they don't bounce around at all so excellent protection disadvantage of course these cost more than any generic foam uh the miniatures fit snugly so you have to watch out for that paint rub so make sure you're well varnished um one of the problems is these are only specific models, right? So if you have your army, you buy it, and then you decide to add another unit, and if it's not one that already fits in your foam, now you have to go to get another piece of foam or another case. And I got to say, these don't seem to exist for board games. I don't see Battle Foam doing uh, Rising Sun 
insert for the, for now at least. So maybe I'm missing it out. The companies I looked at, they seem to really focus on the full miniature war games. So Battle Foam does actually have a rising sun. Oh, there um, you go. So, so I, I, I would say battlefoam.com uh, does have a huge list of games. Uh, they even have foam inserts for Cards Against Humanity. So... There you go, because you got to protect those cards. Because <laughs> if Mo gets to them, he might ruin them. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so right. yeah, there is there is the foam is out there. I mean, they even, they even have an electric football for those old rattling oh, yeah. no, footballs. Those aren't old right? anymore. They've been re-released. Oh, yeah, that's re why. But uh, yeah, so, back out. so so all sorts of yeah. stuff. Uh, Battle foams are, or yeah, Battle foams are a fantastic yeah. uh, option. I'm sure it's only one. Sorry, that that. Yeah, I was to, say, uh, the thing <laughs> with Battle foam is Battle foam's known to be the best. And I don't, there are now copycats. Yeah. I will just say that. So price check yep. is, is, is my suggestion is, is there are other people doing similar things. A battle phone's been doing it for the longest or at least are the most well-known. Yep. So then there's the compromise between the last two is the customizable foam tray. Uh, these I've seen people call um, pluck or pre-cut foam. And what it is, you get the foam, and this is a little hard to decide, describe, but you get your foam, and it's like diced, It's but not all the way through, oh, and shit. then you can pull out cubes, you can pull out sections of it for your for your miniatures. And I think these are great. Um, <laughs> Pluck foam has little little square bits, yes. where you just literally pull out the square bits and, and make, your, make your shape out of the foam. Exactly. That's Sean's got some right there. Now the miniature <laughs> stuff is usually cut to a smaller little cube, so the cubes aren't so big. Yeah. So you can actually really get close to the shape of your actual miniatures. Now others, you can literally just get a sheet of foam you cut yourself to whatever shape you want. Um, personally, I wouldn't pay someone that's trying to sell me a miniature sheet of foam. I would just go buy a sheet of foam and cut it myself at home hardware. But there are companies out there doing it. Now, the advantages, of course, again, you're getting all the advantages of a hard case because you're going to store this in a hard case, can hold pretty much any miniature of any size and shape, but you're probably going to have to do it yourself, so it requires some skill. And once you've done it, you're stuck with it. So you're going to have the same disadvantages of a custom foam tray. What, what if you decide to trade in your Land Raider for a new Lehman Rust tank, and now you don't? it's not going to fit in the same spot? And the same problem with all these sealed cases, you don't get to show off your awesome miniatures. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, the customizable foam trays are great, but that's, uh, I would recommend moving more towards that if you have picked up an entire something, a set, a, a full set. Okay, now I'm going to buy something and do something with that yeah. full set uh, rather than the sort of picking up bits and pieces because that's where, you're, again, where you're going to get into trouble by, you know, oh, I got rid of this, I got this, and, and mm -hmm. this is something you want to you store. Uh, but the okay. nice thing is you have a lot of different options on how you can carry that with the, you know, the foam. So there's a lot yeah. of different cases out there. Uh, I know in Canada, especially if you go to uh, princess auto, they have really cheap hard shell plastic cases mm -hmm. that come with pick and uh, pull foam. Now they're the larger pick and pull foam, like the one I was just showing, but uh, again, they're, you know, 30 bucks for large, you know, huge mm -hmm. size uh, cases. The other thing people have recommended, I didn't throw this on the list because personally I was thinking more protection, is I guess you can now get foam the perfect size for banker boxes. Mm -hmm. And people are doing that for storing their minis. Like, I personally, that seems like a bit like I'm putting my minis in storage. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not going to be using them to play because it's going to be really a pain in the butt to get that bottom miniature off the third box that's on the third shelf in the back office. But that is definitely, you can, you can get foam for various different size cases. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, if you're whether you're going to Home Depot or your local hardware store, or also make sure you check your art supply stores because they yep. have a lot of foam options there for artists that would work just great for your minis. All right, getting away from the foam in the cases. Next up, this is something I, know I, I see in the miniature gaming field a lot: are the dioramas or battle boards. This is really popular with Warhammer and War Machine, I've noticed, or Hordes. And I have seen a few people do it for board games, but not often. And what this is, is you've got your assembled painted army, team, whatever you've got for your game, and you basically build them a set. You build them a scene that holds all the miniatures. People often use magnets for this. This way the, mag the, the minis stay on them. Other people have ways to lock them in. Sometimes just a matter of the bases fit on the board. Now, the best of these 
combine just having a display board with a way to somehow close it and transport it. So I've seen all kinds of boards built inside of like, uh, I don't know, I want to call it a briefcase, but like those wooden cases yep. so that you can open it up and it's got a, you know, back display and it looks awesome and you can fold it up and bring it to the game store. These look fantastic and be a great way to both display your painted miniatures as well as transport them. Absolutely. These can be fantastic. And, it, you know, it while it may not happen a lot of the time for board games, if you again, if you look at something like, uh, you know, um, Lopan and, you know, you've got those great, great action games that are very thematic or Labyrinth is another one. It's a horrible yep. game, but they're beautiful miniatures. So if you want to display them, something like a diorama is a really great way to do yep. that. And if you can make it portable, then you've solved Even a couple better. of problems. Yeah, these, they look great, right? So they're a great way to show off your minis. They're going to be custom made for your specific miniatures, so you don't have to worry about them fitting or not. It's a good way to keep your miniatures separate from each other so they're not rubbing. And if made properly, can transport miniatures. The problem is you got to make a diorama, right? That's going to be a ton of work. Like making scenery, dioramas, and displays is a hobby all on its own. There are people who do that for a living who have never painted a miniature in their life. Some fantastic YouTube channels out there that I love watching where people just like recreate a stream and that's it. That's all they did. I'm like, well, what are you using it for? And they're like, no, just made a stream. <laughs> I'm like... The disadvantage too, though, is, is the same thing we said before with the specific uh, army foam is it's made for that army. So if you modify your army, you may not be able to use your board. Now, if you're good, you're going to make sure you use the same type of bases or something, and then maybe you can swap out some minis. But it's kind of like you got like Sean suggested the last time. You got to be done, right? You got to be like, I have my force. Like, this is all I'm ever going to use. Then you can do it. Other problem is these can be large, especially if you've got a large army. When you get into especially the 40K or the fantasy battle armies, it's a lot of miniatures. These boards are huge. Like where you're going to display that in your home is going to be a little difficult. Yeah, if you if you've got it, although you know if you've got enough to start buying full uh, 40k armies and time to paint them, maybe you've got the money to display them as well. So yeah. you know your mileage True may enough. vary. <laughs> All right, this is a really popular one nowadays. This is something I don't remember seeing back when I was into board gaming, and this is just a step down from your battle board. You're still using the board, but all you're using is a board. And you're magnetizing your mini to the board. Board's got nothing fancy on it. Now, this can be done with a metal board. I'm saying board, I think, cardboard or, or wood. But no, just a sheet of metal and putting magnet, or by using wood and putting magnets on the minis and the board. Now, what's cool with this is people are putting out travel cases where you can slide these in. A really cheap way to do this is you get a metal muffin tin, or and I'm baking tray. You just get a metal, metal breaking tray. You put magnets on the bases of your minis, you stick them on your baking tray, and now you have some way to move your miniatures around and somewhere to, to move them all at once. That's the, the super cheap version of this. And then if you get the right kind of case, you can slide the trays into them and move a whole bunch of trays at once. The weird part is I was having a real hard time finding those. Like, they're out there. I see people sharing pictures of what they're doing, but I was having a hard time finding actual cases that slide trays into them. And I think the, they're from the food industry for a lot of them. Yeah, they would be, although it wouldn't be too hard to do customized thing, uh, you know, with some, with some nice, a nice woodwork. I, you know, we, we yeah. I, I know a lot of uh, different uses I've seen for, for like shelving units where you just, instead of the shelf, you just have yeah, the, you have the, your sliding, tray, your the sliding tray, tray and, the yeah, yeah. On them. and you just literally need to route out a, tr uh, a path on either side, yeah. have whatever height you need. So. So advantages, it's a good way to keep all of one type and mini in one place, right? You got all your empire troops on one sliding thing and all your resistance troops on another, or whatever your, your different sets are. Uh, the boards can be put on display. You could like slide them out and show them off, right? And it keeps the minis apart from each other, which is the important part, right? The minis aren't going to touch each other or bang into anything, and they're not even going to rub against any foam. So you don't have to worry about those professional paint jobs or protrusions sticking out of your minis. But be careful, you're making sure you're using strong magnets and trust them. Uh, people who show these off online sure love to flip them upside down, and I'm sure there's some that took multiple takes because <laughs> the mini's falling off. Uh, magnets do wear out over time, so this may be a temporary measure. And I got to say, it doesn't look that great. Like, it just, you got a bunch of minis sitting on a platter or a tray. It's, it the other, works, I guess. The other problem you've got is, again, if you've got small children or plan to have small children, magnets can be dangerous. Yes. So... Just keep, keep, you know, be aware that if you've got, you know, your little, you know, jar of magnets somewhere that uh, one magnet into a child's uh, belly is is something you can deal with. Two magnets into a child's intestines is deadly often. 
That is true. All right, back to what Sean was talking about earlier before he realized I was talking about specific miniature cases is your plano and tackle boxes. These can be fantastic for storing and transporting miniatures. You can get these in a number of different sizes. They can store all kinds of minis, whether you just need a handful for a skirmish game, or you can get a full tackle box to carry your entire X-Wing collection. The advantage here that I really like that a lot of the other options don't have is most planos or tackle boxes have clear lids, so you can see what's inside the box, which is a huge advantage over some of the earlier suggestions. They're generally very cost-effective. You can get them cheap enough. You can get plano alternatives at the dollar store. Uh, most of them are modular, so you can adjust the compartment size by adding walls or removing them to fit different size miniatures. They're great for transport. M many have handles, and if they don't, they usually stack together. And often, and this is a huge advantage for board games, they'll fit back in the box. So you put your miniatures in the plano, and then you put the plano in the board game box. So you get the advantage of having your miniatures in your box. There you go. The disadvantage, though, is that the miniatures are loose. So they're going to bounce around, and they're in plastic, not in foam. So you got to be careful with that one. And again, the usual, it's in a box. You can't show it off very well. But now that being said, uh, with a lot of plano boxes, again, because they are customizable size-wise, you can get yourself some thin foam and yep. use that to protect them and basically uh, make, uh, you know, expand the space with foam so that the miniature just fits in. So not only is it got foam up, it's up against foam, it's not going to be rattling around as much. If Perfect. you are going to do this, try and get yourself a closed cell foam or use a foam core or something that where you're not going to have that problem where some, the small bits will get hooked you in the foam get and get damaged. Very true. And this is another one, this is an older tip from when I was on Cool Mini or Not, the website, before they were a big game company, was your blister packs used to always come with that foam. If you save that foam, you can throw it into your various containers to kind of make things a little tighter. Yep. All right, here is my life hack, my gaming hack of the podcast. Keep your egg crates. This is something I use when I was running D&D at the local store when I just needed to bring a couple dozen miniatures with me or if I just needed some characters, I use an egg crate. The individual cups keep the miniatures from banging into each other and the soft cardboard is about as good as foam for protecting them from damages. I used to keep my painted Warhammer minis when I when I had an army. They were all in egg crates. It was the, yep. it was just the easiest way to go. And if you've got smaller numbers, uh, you know, a, a 12 or an 18 folding top egg crate does great but if you've got a larger army you can get the flat egg crates and stack them and yeah. you can hold a lot of minis really cheaply yeah that's the biggest advantage right damn cheap you're probably spending nothing on this because you probably already have egg crates at home and if you don't i bet you can go to the local grocer and ask them for the flats yeah. and either get them cheap if not free and i guess it protects miniatures pretty well like at least it stops them from banging into each other um for the smaller ones, they're pretty easy to transport. They don't stack great, but if you're only going to bring a couple of them, you throw them into your milk crate or whatever. Now, they're not that robust. Uh, you're not going to want to bring your miniatures back and forth in the same egg crate for a month and every weekend. It's probably not going to last that long. But egg crates are cheap. You get another one. And it's not going to protect your minis as well as some of the more expensive options we already discussed. And it's okay. For storing miniatures, but not great. Like, if you're going to do layers of the, the small egg crate, you got to, what if I want the one in the bottom? And a whole bunch of egg crates stacked on a shelf. They don't, I don't know, the egg crates just aren't nest. They don't nest, right? Like, they don't stack well and together. The other big problem you can run into is size. These are for yeah. character minis. These are for your standard D&D size minis. You can't hold a tank. You can't hold, you know, a lot of the stranger-sized uh, minis you're going to run into. Mm -hmm. So you are limited in what you can use this hack for. All right, uh, this is not necessarily a hack, but just something I fear has to go on the list, and that's plastic baggies, because I use them all the time. These are for miniatures you're not worried about. Uh, this is what I use for all those pre-painted miniatures that are out on the market now, all the D&D &D miniatures, the Pathfinder miniatures, the Wardling miniatures, which are these awesome minis of kids with little animal companions, all those soft plastic pre-paints that are out there. The big advantage of using baggies is sorting. I have a lot of D&D &D miniatures, and what I do is I have my miniatures sorted by a bag of Dark Elves, and here's a bag of Goblins, and here's a bag of Dwarves, and when I need a specific type of creature, and I've labeled all these, actually, like you can tell because they're see-through but i actually did the whole used the marker and labeled them all and went oh this is the bag of fire elementals okay where's the elemental i need this of course dirt cheap is great for sorting it keeps sets of minis together so all my dwarves are in the same place 
it's easy to transport. I just literally grab the bags and toss them. I, I move everything by milk crate. I grab the bag of dwarves I need for the next adventure, throw it in the milk crate with my dungeon tiles and my dice. That being said, there are some perhaps drawbacks that you might yes. see from this discussion. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really protect the miniatures at all. Uh, they're free paints, though. They are made of flexible plastic, and I gotta admit, I've yet to break a single one. I'm doing this, I've never broken a D&D miniature. If I scrape paint off, I've never noticed, because to be honest, they're not painted all that well in the first place. Um, it doesn't show off the minis, but in a way, like who cares, because they're D&D minis, they're pre-paints. Uh, the problem, though, can have is if you have a lot of them, sorting can stink. Like, if I'm looking for, the, I know I have the paladin with the shield and a torch, and I want that one mini, well, I store all mine in a big wooden chest, and trying to find that one paladin in that chest, even with labeled bags, is kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, it all depends on how organized you want to be and how specific you want to get on labeling things. And, you know, are, are all your paladins in one place, or are all your heroes in one place, or, uh, you know, oh, wait, yeah. the paladin, that was an armored character, so he's in the bag with mm -hmm. the, the or, or wait, no, because he was in the party with the other person, so no, he's in the bag from the Thursday Night Adventures. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I've, I've been through all of those problems. Yep. <laughs> all right. One final tongue-in-cheek suggestion for storing and protecting miniatures is don't open them. Keep them in the original box. This goes for all those miniatures, I know you've done this, that you have bought for games that you never actually play. Um, all those half-completed armies, those awesome miniatures you had to have but never actually got to the table or used. At one time, I opened and prepped and assembled every miniature I ever got. If I got a box of Warhammer Orcs, I cracked that thing open, I snipped them, I cleaned them, and I assembled them. And I was going to paint them, and I was going to build an army, and I was going to play. Well, I never got there. Now, I admit, I had fun building them, but I you can't see it from here, but there is a lot of assembled miniatures to my right over here. Um, nowadays, I, I don't even open them. Like, I get excited and I go buy the mini because I still do it now and then. I can't help it. It's a, They call it figmentia. I've heard it called before. I've had that problem. Now I sit there and I go, you know what? I'm going to put this on my shelf. And then when I set up a game of War Machine, I will then open up the War Machine miniatures and assemble them so I can bring them to the store on Saturday to play. And if I don't get to that point where I've scheduled the game to play, they sit in the box. And I literally have that. All of my War Machine right there, you can see my starter set from then off, is still in the box. And they're going to sit there until I actually plan to sit down with, you know, Sean Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton. And he's going to actually teach me to play War Machine because I've been wanting to do that for three years. But until that happens, they sit in the box. So it's probably your easiest option, that's for sure. Yep, it definitely is. There's no work required. And you know what? The miniatures are going to be as good a shape as the manufacturer sent them to me. They're just as good as they were on the store shelf. Absolutely. Of course, I can't actually sit down and play War Machine tonight because all my miniatures are still in a box and not assembled. And while it kind of sadly shows how much money you spend on miniatures that just sit on your shelves for a long time. Also, definitely not a display option, although the box can be pretty. That's true. I can at least go look at all the stuff I bought that I don't use. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. I have got one final thing I want to talk about today. Um, this is going to expand on the topic, and that is terrain and scenery. So tonight's topic comes on behalf of our Patreon patrons. Uh, those of you awesome people at the hotel guest or higher level who entered a poll on our Patreon and picked our topic tonight. Now, on the poll, one specific patron, Jeff Seuss, commented to know, I'll pick this topic, but only if you also talk about terrain. So, fair enough. We'll also talk about terrain. I don't know if this will end up in the article version of this, but at least for the podcast. So, this is for you, Jeff. So, the problem with terrain is, in general, it's big. And added to that, it's usually and often very fragile. And a lot of it is handmade, so there's a lot more work and effort that goes into it. So you're probably going to require a higher level of protection. You're gonna want, you're gonna care more about it than that miniature you slap some paint on. I don't know, like, like I don't know. There's something yeah. more involved in building scenery. Well, and also compared to that, it hasn't even come with something to start. You start off with, you know. Yes. Again, we, we talked about a lot of these things. They came with something at some point, other than the armies that were all, you know, flat pack sprues there was some method of carrying a lot of this stuff along the way. If you've built your own senior scenery, there's nothing unless yeah. you made it along with the scenery. Yeah. So some of the suggestions above are just as valid for terrain. 
Uh, one of our first suggestions, especially, put it out on display. Put it on your shelves. I, that's honestly what I do with most of my scenery. What I do is I mix it in with the miniatures. So the miniatures are out on the shelves, and I throw a tree and a building in the corner, and I'll put a hedgerow up, and all my orc arches are actually standing on a hill. Uh, that way it's there on display with everything else. Now, of course, the problems are the same here. The problems are just as bad with scenery as they are for miniatures, and that's, of course, running out of room and having to keep everything clean. And again, though, this is a sort of a combination of that display plus diorama and yeah. accessibility that's really handy if it wasn't a pain in the butt to keep clean. Yes, <laughs> and didn't take up so much room. Now, smaller pieces of scenery, you can use any of the miniature stories and transport recommendations above, right? So anything roughly man size should fit in a standard miniature storage container. Tables, chairs, gravestones, fence sections, bushes, whatever. Uh, what you're not going to find, though, are your specialized traits. You're not going to be able to, I don't, I don't, I'm pretty sure, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Battle Foam has a thing for holding trees, but I'm assuming they don't. I could be wrong. Uh, you're probably not going to find a, a specially made insert for your Hearst Arts made ruined walls on an AOL CD. It's just not going to be out there. Though, if you can design your scenery that's on a base, you may be able to use some of the inserts that hold miniatures by their bases. So I have seen this before, especially for objectives in games like Warhammer 40k, where you just make your objectives on a standard miniature base, and if you have some form of transport that holds things by the base, it'll work just as well for your scenery or your terrain as it will for the original. So Battle, Battle Foam does have some uh, Warhammer Underworlds foam thing. Looks like uh, some scenery for, for, for specific games, but not... For specific games. Yeah, yeah. So but otherwise, so they'll not, sell... Not that you made your own. They'll sell, <laughs> you, they'll sell you foam, and you can cut it yourself, I'm sure. Which, of course, gets to um, uh, one of my next things, right? For larger scenery, you're going to have to look at cases for larger figures. And this goes back to the thing where I was mentioning earlier, where there's a lot of foam out there to hold tanks for Warhammer 40k, or the gargantuan units for War Machine and Hordes, the big stuff, there is thicker foam. And that might fit some of your scenery. Now, it's going to be a hit or miss, you're going to have to try to find something that works, but it might be able to work out. And you might even be able to sit there, and if you say you're going to design a forest, get the, the footprint for a land raider and use that as your base shape for your forest. Now, one thing you can get, and again, this is what I was talking about from uh, uh, Princess Auto, is the, flick, the pluck foam. Basic, right? yeah. you know, they're firm plastic cases. They come as toolboxes, and they come. This one actually has it out, but it's got you know nice corrugated fo foam on top, right here. And then yep. there was a layer of pluck foam in here, and again, this would be great for your smaller stuff, your your fences, your your walls, and things like yep. that. And then. This is a small option. There are ones that are easily four times this size mm -hmm. where you can get into some of your larger landscape pieces and they have the much deeper pluck and pull foam. Yeah. So another thing is go to your hardware sorting tools. I, I couldn't think of a way to describe this well, but what I have is a number of Stanley, they're called small part organizers. So it's the kind of thing you put nuts, bolts, nails, screws, uh, whatever, your, your plumbing tools. Stanley organized. These are usually thicker. I have them for dungeon tiles, D&D &D dungeon tiles, but they can be great for scenery. What separates these above just your plano boxes or tackle boxes is they tend to have larger compartments and deeper trays that you can rearrange and put in different patterns to fit different things. And the other thing to look at is bins for storing nuts and bolts and nails. There's a, I don't, again, I don't know the, the technical term for them, but they stack together. And they're for you can reach in and pull out your nuts, bolts, screws, whatever they small, are. Small parts organize parts organizers yeah, is what it's going to be. Parts organizers, right? Yeah. And like honestly, if you're looking to store scenery, just go to your local hardware store and go through that section, and you'll probably see something that'll be perfect for what you're trying to hold. Really, it really is the best solution. If you've got anything you need to store, yeah. go to your hardware store, whether it's you know a Canadian Tire, a Lowe's, a Home Depot. Uh, whatever, whatever it may be, Princess Auto is fantastic. If you've got something like that, uh, auto auto parts stores, I really recommend taking a trip into one because auto parts have some really strange storage sizes that are required, and so they may really have something a little outside of what you're going to get in your normal store, yeah. in your normal hardware store. Something more than just nuts and bolts because they've got to hold, you know, your brake clamp widget 
you know yeah so sure. they're gonna have th those some of those other sizes um but they're gonna be there and there's and a lot of them are really cheap yep all right my last suggestion gets back to those battle boards right if you're gonna make a battle board to display your army you can do the same thing for your scenery make a scenic display board now i gotta admit i've never seen one but why not make a magnetic diorama of your terrain and scenery where you can just remove the pieces you need as you need them and then put them back when done. Like I, someone must've done this, but every time I see it, someone's got their miniatures in there too. I'm like, I just want someone to like make a medieval city where you can take the bits out and then go play with them and then go put them back. I'm sure it can be done. Oh, absolutely. So uh, just again, looking at battlefoam.com, they have what they call Magna racks, which are a, uh, a the metal carrying it's well, it's actually, it's a, it's a metal racking sliding rack system of different depths and heights in a carrying case. So you've there got, you go. basically it's a duffel bag that wraps around your metal sliding shelves for the magnetic, uh, holding your magnetic stuff. And if there's no reason you can't put magnets in your scenery as well as your miniatures. So I hope that helps out, Jeff. That's at least some of my suggestions for scenery. Like I said, myself, I, mine's all on my shelves, but I know once you get to a certain point, that doesn't work anymore. Um, I, just at local game stores, I noticed what they often have is a specific shelf for scenery. Now, a lot of the scenery people use for the, for it uses foam core. So it's very light. It's pink insulating foam and you'll see people just toss it on top of each other and stack it. But it always makes me sad because every game store I've ever been to, when I look through their scenery section, it's all dinged and beat up and it drives me nuts. And I just, I feel bad for whoever made that for them because most game stores, either someone works there and made it, but a lot of them it's donated from, from people who play at the stores, which is awesome. But I just look at these like, like, didn't that take you a long time? So I don't know, maybe if I made 60 hills in one night, I wouldn't care as much, but all my pieces are always a little more detailed than what I usually see. So maybe that's it. All right. Well, that's it for our thoughts on storing, sorting, and transporting tabletop game miniatures. We're going to head over to the lobby to see what the awesome folk gathered there have to say hey. so uh we've had a whole lot of different stuff in there uh well i know ryan ryan's been loving my uh my princess auto uh comments uh, any <laughs> we, any we, canadians we, who have been to princess auto know what i'm talking about and i i'm sure so there's an equivalent weird, in the states uh i just I, I i don't know what it is it's just a very odd store that has yeah. a strange amalgam of things in it uh but for storage stuff, it's really hard to beat. The weirdest thing about Princess Auto is it's all off brand. Yeah. It's like a <laughs> weird selection of stuff and it's not I don't it's almost like wish for car parts, but not from China. Like Well, and actually I have to say, if you if you if you head into their the uh, at least the my the one I go to, there's a back corner where they've got sort of toys and it's very much like Wish, uh yeah. including some very in in English uh oh, labels okay. on things uh my favorite was one i'd have to go back into facebook to find it but there was a box of and it was uh little lanterns where you put a little tea light inside and yep. send it flying away and reading the descriptions and the warnings on this box <laughs> was just it made my day it was fantastic uh other than that uh ryan, ryan was asking about plastic bankers boxers and i found a quick one at walmart so they do exist yep. uh you don't have to just deal with the the cardboard bankers boxes although that's the the cheapest and easiest solution like, uh, to be honest like once you can buy the hard cases but like if you just have a hard case you can generally find foam in the right size i've seen people use laundry bins like i've seen everything personally Absolutely. i like the nice snap together with a handle on it but it yep. depends how much you're trying to transport too like some games take a lot of miniatures so if you're not playing at home yep part of the problem and we didn't really get into this too which i guess was actually part of the question so maybe we skipped over it was labeling everything right how if you've got all this stuff do you find where's my orc army compared to my empire army right so that can also be an issue which i i didn't really have any solid suggestions for that yeah i mean print labels now ryan actually did mention in the chat room earlier uh there was someone who took pictures of the completed assembly of how the miniatures went away yep. printed that out Put and stuck box. it well and, and, yeah. and turned it into to, to labels that stuck underneath where the miniature goes so you yep. can actually look and see oh this miniature there's the picture of it it goes right in there so if you've got the ability to, to print that out and put it underneath yeah, uh, your right. storage solution so that you can see what goes yeah, there. Yeah, you've got clear plastic. That makes perfect sense. If you've yeah. got a clear insert, I've got one behind me actually. 
for um Star Wars Rebellion. I've got yeah. that there. That'd be a good one to have it. Or even if you're or if you're doing Plano or something and you can you can put yeah. you know put the little uh Yeah, I've seen that Plano where people take pictures and they cut it out and put it in the bottom of the, yeah. the trays. I see a lot of people in the chat like like Plano, Heartboard Games, uh Ryan. There's some definite Plano fans in our group. Um there is a ton that basically they're saying look online that that there is board game foam for pretty much everything. Like battle foam's the one that I I know of on my hand, but there is more. There are, there are tons of company doing them. Yeah, and Ryan was saying said something he wants to DIY one of the super thick zipper binders into a minis carrier, and I have to say that's probably actually not that bad an idea. You just need to make sure you find the right pull and pluck foam that's the same thickness as the binder. Uh, you know the the leather binder I use for my for for RPG. That would actually too thin, aren't they? For most minis, uh, well, not if you do lay down, stand up, yes, oh, lay down. Yes. No, you could do you could do you know, an entire character set of you know for your RPG group or whatever in something like that, and it would be uh, a nice easy carry. Uh, Labyrinth minis would all fit into one of yeah. those sort of thing too. Now that's something else we didn't carry because he said hundreds of miniatures, but know what? There's a lot of out there now, especially on Etsy, are things that carry your dice and your miniature. There are a lot of that. So that's for carrying one your your character, right? right. Yeah, yeah, that's the RPG. Yeah. There are a lot of those out there. And some are really nice, right? It fits your set of dice and it's a dice cup and then it's got your miniature, which is really cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's not gonna help you out if you're if you're no, you know, not if you're doing the Warhammer army. <laughs> yeah, hundreds of miniatures is definitely very different. So what I would love to know for any of you out there listening, hit me up, Mo at tabletopbellhop.com. Or go on, go uh, catch us on social media. What do you use? What do you do to store your miniatures? Is there something we haven't mentioned? Is there some method that we missed out on that we haven't tried? Now, I'll admit, I have not tried all the ones we mentioned tonight. Um, doing a quick search, I didn't see a lot of options that I hadn't already covered. So, which I guess I kind of know what I'm talking about or something. <laughs> it was pretty cool. The metal trays was uh, one that I, there are a lot of people with these slide in metal trays for transporting their miniatures and various like carrying cases. I even saw someone using uh, Tiffins for uh, Indian food because they all stack, right? And they got a handle on the top and they're using that to move their army around. I'm like, ah, that's pretty cool, but that's pretty specific. And I have no idea where you would get Tiffin trays for that. Yeah, but yeah so let us know. Uh, hit us up social media, send me an email. That'd be kind of cool. It sounds like Magna Rack, uh, M-A-G-N-A Rack, is the sort of the battle tray uh, official the term. The metal tray version. Yeah, so of that's their uh, that's that's their um, that's their brand name, I guess, is Magna Rack. Uh, and I see a lot of there's a lot of care, uh, you know, even even Canadian distributors and things carrying that product yep. for battle foam. Very so, fair. all right, well. That's it for our main topic tonight. Remember, you can find lots of gaming topics and advice like this over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on Gaming Advice at the top of the page.